So in this video, we're going to talk about vectors. So vectors are linear data structure like an array, but they can be resized and there's a lot of additional methods that we get that come with a vector. So let's define a vector. And we need to specify what type we're going to store in that vector. So here, I've created a vector with a capacity of 10. I'll make another vector and here I'm initializing with an array initializer Here we have a default initialization. Here's another example of an array initializer. And I'm going to create a variable here to store the size of a vector. So size type is an unsigned type that stores a size. So I can say that v1 is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. And then the size is going to be v1 size. So we have a size method that will return the size. So we'll say vector one size is equal to that size. And I'll create a space and then its capacity is equal to the capacity. And that's another method that we have. So let's do the same thing for vector two, except let's call v2.size here. So three and four as well. Let's run this so that we'll see what each of the sizes are. So notice we got a lot of errors here. And if we start off, notice vector was not declared in this scope. So it is in the standard namespace, so we have that taken care of. But we didn't include our vector include. So now if we compile... We have a little bit of a syntax error here. That's easy enough to fix. And if we run this, we see that vector one has a size of four, a capacity of 10. The others, their size is equal to their capacity. So the way to think of this is the size is the number of elements that the vector actually contains. So that's how many elements we've put in our vector or how many we initialized it with. That's how many elements are currently in the vector. The capacity is how much space the vector is currently using. So when I initialized this with 10, that gave me a vector that had 10 slots, but only four of them are actually being used. Okay, so that's an important distinction to keep in mind when you're working with vectors. Vectors give us a lot of different ways to access the individual members of the vector. So I want to even before I do this one, I want to point out that the following is unsafe. Okay, but I want you to be aware of it just because I've seen plenty of examples of this being used. Again, if you see this, it's probably best to go ahead and just change the code. We're going to do a for loop.
And I'll actually, we'll even do plus five just to demonstrate that this works. So here we're going to use array indexing to access the members of the vector. And notice that we've gone beyond the capacity. So just like with array indexing, there's no bounds checking. Okay, so I have all sorts of errors here. We're missing a quote there. So if I run this, notice it's more than happy to print additional values. In fact, if we look at how these were initialized, you'll see that we even print some of the values of V2 because those just happen to be in memory at those locations. So it's important consideration to keep in mind, be careful when you're using array indexing because there's no bounds checking. Well, at this point, right, I mean, that's certainly not ideal. So let's see if there's some other things we can do. So let's um, copy those five lines and let's do it a different way. So now let's use at. And so now I'm going to say v1 at ii. So we have a function call. So let's compile and let's run. So we actually have some good news here. This is out of range. So this is going to create a compilation error or a, a, a core dump. So that's good. So we do have some bounce checking here at least. So why don't we try just going to the capacity? So notice the size here is four. So even though the capacity is allocated, that's not going to work either. We have to use the size. So if we compile and run that, now notice this works as we would expect. So, and just to show, actually maybe just to show that this does uh, work. So capacity will work if capacity is less than the size, but again, that's dubious at best because you can't have cases where the capacity is larger than the size. So it's always safer just to use the size, but let's go ahead and do this. And what we're going to do is do this that we know is going to create a, an issue. So I'm going to put this in a try block. So there we go. And then I'll catch an out of range exception. And if I catch that, I'll print that out. So I think this way we'll be able to keep in that invalid code, but we'll see that it causes a problem. So what we're going to want to do is use the size. Let's see if that all works. So we're missing a. Semicolon. So you'll notice here when we go beyond the capacity, actually beyond the size. You'll notice we get this out of range exception after we've printed the first four that are valid. So at is still a little questionable because it, we're not doing bounce checking until we actually try to use it. So the safe way to do this is to use an iterator. And let's add some space here. So the way we do that, say we want an iterator, 
and we start off with the begin. And we go until we reach the end. And we increment ii. And then we print each element out. And this iterator, we do need to de we get a pointer to what's there, so we need to dereference it. And we have all sorts of issues. Yeah, I'm missing the scope resolution operator there. I'm indicating that this is a vector iterator. Okay, so that should clear up a lot of those errors, if not all of them. And we still have a semicolon issue. We'll take care of that. Good. So this is safer when we use this iterator. Or even better than an iterator is to using a range for, or we'll call it a for each loop. So for auto ii v1, see out ii space. And we'll do a new line at the end. So there's our several different ways of accessing the elements of an iterator, or the elements of a vector. And you'll notice, certainly, this is the cleanest set of output. And actually, let's go ahead and make this a const reference. Because we're not going to be changing i, and it's good to get in the habit of keeping that const unless you know for sure that you want to do that. Because that'll throw an error if we wanted to try to say i, I is equal to 10. So if we did something like that. then you'll see that we get an error. And then without that, we could certainly change it to whatever we wanted. So um, that covers how to print the things out that are in a vector. So next, we're going to talk about how we add things to the vector.